Hello everyone, my name is Justin Schofield and I'm a Michigan State University senior, double majoring in social relations and policy and secondary education social studies. I am also pursuing a teaching minor in Spanish. I'm going to be talking to you today about my teacher identity. I'm going to start with my why and why I want to be a teacher. I want to be a teacher because I want to help my students maximize their intellectual potential. I will be a teacher that sees the greatness that my students inherently possess, even when they don't see it in themselves. I want to help in the development of students becoming academic scholars and democratic citizens. For students to be academic scholars in my classroom, they need to develop the skill of critical thinking. To do this, I will have them, per Bloom's taxonomy, not only remember, but understand, apply, analyze, evaluate, and create. I want my students to develop the skill of civic engagement. This means students engaging in effective discourse about society's most pressing issues while understanding the importance of community building and political voice. Another way I can ensure students become critical thinkers and democratic citizens is by applying the critical race theory to lessons so students understand a thorough examination of society and culture and also the, interaction, the intersection of race, law, and power in the social studies realm. Stealing this line from another respected teacher, I want to edutain my students. If a teacher cannot entertain and engage their students, then they will not be able to effectively educate them. Edutaining my students can best be achieved through the pedagogical tool of differentiation. Mixing in lecture, group work, classroom movement, and media literacy tools such as YouTube will help entertain my students. Here is an example of using differentiated techniques when trying to edutain my students. So, reason number one, you can start your guided notes now. So, reason number one, the proclamation of 1763. So, while you guys are running, it prohibited colonists from moving west and expanding their land. Like I said earlier, they thought it was their destiny to expand their land. Also, this meant more British troops in North America to enforce the proclamation line. So, so, actually getting groups of two or three right now, and we're going to answer, just talk about these questions on this next slide here. So think about your initial reactions to this video, but also think, next slide, uh oh, I have it here. Um, so next, these three questions here. So what do you think the line means, sugar act, offsets the French and Indian War? What does that line mean? What was the Stamp Act? And what does it mean to boycott? Again, use context clues. And why did the colonists do it? So in groups of two or three, you have two minutes to discuss this. So I hope you enjoyed seeing some real examples. I want to touch on two more things that will define me as a teacher. I want to be a teacher that facilitates collaboration where students learn the importance of working together to achieve a common goal. I want to be a teacher that is not only a sage on the stage, but also a guide on the side. Being a guide on the side will give more autonomy to my students through student learning instead of just me speaking information at them. Being a guide on the side could also mean giving my students more choices in how to accomplish and understand a learning objective. This could enhance creativity and overall enjoyment for the course material. Handling controversy and overbearing parents is an essential part of being a teacher. As Vinnie Lindquist said in the panel, I need to defend my lessons. To defend my lessons, I will need to make sure they are effective in achieving the learning objectives. On top of defending lessons, I will need to show both my care for my students and my passion for the material. When students know that you care about them and their success, they will be more willing to work for you and your parents will be, will be better able to understand my teaching style. Also to gain respect, I need to know that consistency is key in how I run my class, grade, and discipline my students. One of the people to inspire me to be a teacher was Coach Schultz. Coach Schultz was one of my wrestling coaches as well as the AP US history teacher at my high school. Coach Schultz inspired me my freshman year. 
My freshman year, I was the smallest kid on the wrestling team. However, Coach Schultz always made me feel like the biggest. He really helped me build confidence, and I was so happy he saw me qualify for states my junior year. Unfortunately, Coach Schultz died at the age of 51 at the end of my junior year. This was an incredibly sad day for me and the entire school. I was scheduled to take AP US History with Coach Schultz my senior year. However, I dropped it following his passing because AP US History was his class. My older brother had him for AP US History a couple years before that, and he was certainly one of a kind, he says. He was very engaging with fantastic stories and a voice unlike any other. He would have open discussions about the class's favorite presidents and would always mention why he thinks James K. Polk was the best for flat out doing his job. My brother told me how he carried a unique energy, was constantly entertaining, and taught in a way that inspired curiosity yet commanded respect. He knew how to make you have fun in class and how to make you work hard. Coach Schultz's teaching style is something for me to strive for. He continues to inspire me today in his ability to be a fantastic and engaging teacher as well as a coach who can bring out the best in people. There are many pedagogical resources I would like to use in my classroom. One in particular is the DBQ project. This website has a plethora of engaging lesson plans and project materials for teaching U.S. history. In the DBQ video we watched in class, I learned that teaching history is not about giving facts and answers to memorize, but asking questions and investigating history through textbook, primary sources, or other perspectives so students can make their own judgments and arguments. Quoting from Sam Weinberg of Stanford School of Education and a leader in the field of history education, he says, although most of us think of history and learn it as a con conglomeration of facts, dates, and key figures, for professional historians it is a way of knowing, a method for developing an understanding about the relationships of peoples and events in the past. Weinberg challenges teachers to consider what is intrinsic to historical thinking, how it might be taught, and why most students still adhere to the one damn thing after another concept of history. DBQ's teaching model is a great resource to model when teaching history effectively. This idea of asking questions instead of giving answers helped me during my mini lesson when giving students new vocabulary words that most of them probably haven't heard before. Take a watch of me doing that. Infringe upon colonial civil rights and their self-government. So first order of business. Who knows what the word infringed means? Anyone? Raise your hand. Joe. Infringe. That's a good one. Whose context? Probably like... Um up upon, like, um, encroach. Encroach. That's a good word. Yes. Encroach. Another word I like is, infringe can mean violated. So when you see the word uh, infringe, think violated. How Britain violated upon colonial civil rights and their self government Another resource I plan to use is integrating music into lessons to highlight a particular social issue, such as the song Sly Fox by Nas where he talks about media's negative effect on people. I plan to use websites like Miniature Earth to understand concepts and perspective in the field of geography. Another resource I can use along with my teaching colleagues are the teaching materials in Peter's Google Drive that he has shared with me. One final resource I can use is a 10 volume set of History of the US textbook, which is a series of 10 textbooks that a former mentor teacher recommended. She said this textbook does a good job of covering history in depth while focusing on multiple perspectives from marginalized groups of people in American history. All in all, I hope to use these resources, the lessons from Coach Schultz, and ultimately the experience of Michigan State University's College of Education to be a teacher that changes the world. Changing the world starts with impact in the life of just one person. To quote Ralph Waldo Emerson, to know even one life has breathed easier because you have lived, this is to have succeeded. Students will undoubtedly breathe easier when they see a teacher that challenges them to be critical thinkers, academic scholars, democratic citizens, and motivated change agents that seek to make the world a better place. 
because ultimately in the words in the words of Nelson Mandela education is the most powerful weapon in which you can change the world thank you for listening and have a great day